As a global population, we are getting fatter and fatter and fatter. The obesity rate now is significantly higher than it was 50 years ago. So the question is, what is fueling the obesity epidemic and what can we do to fix it? Now, first things first, obesity is a very, very complicated issue. For example, different countries will have different food intakes and they'll have different exercise and lifestyle habits. So trying to paint it with just one brush is very problematic. Now, despite this, some people will see a whole wall of problems and try and pinpoint just one factor that's causing it. It's the carb intake, it's the fat intake, whatever it is. Now, I would like to make a case on how complicated this is. So first things first, let's look at food quality. So if you went to the supermarket right now, what would you see that you wouldn't have seen in your household 50 years ago? You will literally have aisles and aisles of sweets, biscuits, cookies, donuts, cakes, you can easily snack and desert your way to a huge caloric intake. Even savoury meals now are becoming higher calorie and easier to cook than ever. Home cooked meals, who the fuck does that nowadays? Get a ready meal, bung it in the microwave. You can have 2000 calories within minutes. Now, generally speaking, the easier it is to consume a food, the more likely you are to do it. So if you had to home cook a very, very high calorie meal, less people are gonna take that option than if they can just sling something in the microwave. So the range of high calorie, hyper palatable food is bigger than ever. And of course, this means people are more likely to overeat. How many calories would you eat for dessert if you only had fruit? Now imagine that in front of you, you have a salted caramel cheesecake and a chocolate gatto. How many calories would you eat then? Most people would find they would consume significantly more calories when faced with these higher calorie, hyper palatable options. Fruit, no one gives a fuck about that when there's chocolate gatto there. So food quality in terms of high calorie options is a huge issue. Not only that, but food is easier to consume than ever. Let's take it one step further. Instead of home cooking, and instead of bunging something in a microwave, you don't even have to leave your sofa anymore. There are more and more food takeaways, there are more and more food delivery companies. You can literally lie on your sofa, pull out your mobile phone and order a takeaway and not have to leave your sofa. Admittedly, you have to answer the door. But apart from that, you can just stay on your sofa. For example, let's test this. Okay, Google, I'm feeling lazy and I can't be bothered to cook. What food options do I have? I can only help you with the first request. Okay. Maybe you're just a relaxation enthusiast. I am a relaxation enthusiast. She's right. Let's try again. Okay, Google. What pizza delivery companies do I have near me? I found a few places within 8.3 miles. The first one is Papa John's Pizza at 6 George Street in Banbury. Perfect. The second one is Pizza Hut Delivery at 67 Cathorpe Street Good in choices. Banbury. The third one is Pizza Express at 39 High Street in Banbury. Think about portion sizes. Yes, I do want the extra large fries and the extra large burger. Yes, I do want the fucking gallon of Coke. Yes, I do want you to supersize me. Of course I do. Portion sizes now are bigger than ever. So what about activity levels? Now, at the risk of sounding like a grandfather, when I was a child, we'd be out on the streets playing football, cricket, baseball, whatever. Nowadays, kids have half a dozen games consoles to pick between, and they can sit there for hours at a time twiddling their thumbs. Physical activity in schools. Are kids doing the same amount of physical activity that they used to? Now, this isn't just a childhood thing either. Think about occupational activity levels in adults. How many people still have manual labor jobs? How many of those people have been replaced by robots? How many people are just sitting at their desk for eight hours a day, barely moving? Not only that, but think about transport to and from work. How many people walk or cycle to work now? You can have buses, trains, cabs. You could call an Uber now, get someone to pick you up and take you to the door of your office and you barely have to walk a few steps. What about when you get to your office? Walking up the stairs, too much fucking hassle. Grab a lift, grab an escalator. It is minimizing the amount of effort that people have to put into their day-to-day -day lives. How many people circle the supermarket car park because they can't find a space close to the entrance? Parking on the other side of the car park is seen as an inconvenience nowadays. You get home in the evening. Now, when I was a child, we had four channels. Nowadays, you've got fucking hundreds of channels. There's always something to watch. And if there isn't something to watch out of those hundreds of channels, you can look at TV on demand. You can load up YouTube. There is always something that could keep you in front of a computer or sitting on your sofa. So let's put this thing into perspective. You can wake up in the morning, have your breakfast, stick something in the microwave, have no effort to cook. You can get a cab from your front door to your workplace. Take an escalator up the stairs to your desk. Sit at your desk for nine hours a day, occasionally breaking to take a piss. 
get a cab straight back home. You can spend the rest of your evening browsing Netflix in your pants using Uber Eats for someone to bring you food while you don't leave your sofa. Yes, the amount of calories that people are burning has significantly decreased. The amount of food that people are eating has significantly increased. Now, this is not me saying that the whole globe is lazy. These are just the conditions that we have nowadays. I use a cab instead of walking. I will drive into town, which is a five minute walk. 10 years ago, I would have walked into town. I wouldn't have driven. Yes, I'll get the escalator instead of the stairs. These are the conditions that we have and we are using them. So what is fueling the obesity epidemic? We have a wider range of high calorie, hyper palatable foods that are more available now than they ever have been. They are at our fingertips. They can be delivered to us with minimal hassle. You can eat more calories in a shorter space of time with less effort than ever. You can also function on a day-to-day -day basis with less physical activity than ever. So to say that carbohydrates or fat are fueling the obesity epidemic on their own is fucking ludicrous to me. So now the big question is what can we do to fix it? Honestly, I don't know. Food companies will continue to pump out super tasty high calorie food and people will continue to eat them because it's delicious. Technology is going to make people's life easier and they're going to be able to expend less calories because that's what people want. Somewhere, something has to break. At the moment, I don't know what that is. Feel free to chime in with your thoughts. Thank you.